Hi, my name is Mark Keene. This is Chris Woods. Uh, we're out here doing some testing today on some of our new pumps and new power kits, different configurations. We are we're trying to balance in a pump to match the optimal performance of the power jet. And as you can see, we have single power jets here, single jet logs that we're experimenting. We're experimenting with double jet logs, and we've even been playing nerdy with some uh, quad jets and triple jets. So we're always in a constant innovative mode trying different types of jet systems. All right, uh, we're actually, you can tell that I have two different power jets laying here. And we're, we're actually testing different orifice sizes inside each jet log. Um, Chris built this for me. So Chris, why don't you show them what you did here with uh, the orifices. Okay. We're trying to develop a uh, jet log for our brand new HP 500 pump. Um, the existing line of jet logs are either too large or too small. So in order to determine the appropriate restriction in the jet log, we've decided to, re to create uh, replaceable restrictors, orifices, in the jet log in a custom-built, one-of-a-kind um, R&D jet log here. So uh, we've just gotten through our testing on this with a single jet log, and we're now trying to determine in a dual configuration what would be the most appropriate restriction in those logs. We've, we've run the two, dual two inch and we've determined that the dual two inch allows too much volume through. And so we're now going to try a dual inch and a half configuration. Exactly. Um, interesting point too, we actually tried three different orifices. We tried like a one, actually four, we tried a one inch, we tried a one and an eighth, one and three sixteenths and a one and a quarter and we end up going with about a one and three sixteenths but again that just matches this particular pump with this particular you know horsepower engine so it, there's a lot of fine tuning a lot of playing and, and even a, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch can make a big difference in achieving that optimal performance on your, uh, your, your suction this is always the fun part of testing you get to put everything together Shame we don't have one of our oversized power jets on this thing, it would be a lot easier on tool. For our test, we're only putting about maybe 12 feet of hose on it just to simulate a little bit of load, but it's enough to get an idea of the suction power. We actually had the five inch hose coiled, they're a little tight. Just helps create a little bit extra resistance. All right, we gotta prime this thing now. Whenever you prime one of these pumps, you gotta remember that uh, normally you have a garden hose port here that you can loosen up. But here, since we don't have a garden hose port, we're just gonna crack this loose so, we can, so the air can get released when we prime it. Because inside your foot valve here, you have a one-way check valve. So every time you take your foot valve and you thrust it through the water, the water climbs in the hose. If you pull it back and you thrust it forward, the water continues to climb higher and higher until you have the water full all the way to the pump. It's a big pump, so it takes a little bit of work to prime it, but I'm gonna do it manually here. In this test, you can see we're running about 48 pounds pressure. And just for the fun of it, we went ahead and deadheaded the pump. And you can see we're running, uh, we're pegging our 60 pound pressure gauge. So I'd imagine we're somewhere up around 70 PSI. Uh, this was a very interesting test. We basically put about a 13 foot piece of hose 
going straight up off the back side of the uh, five inch power jet. And we were able to achieve about 11 and a half foot lift, which kind of surprised me. I didn't think we'd get anywhere near that lift on the discharge. Now this doesn't mean you can lift material that high. In fact, I doubt you could even lift heavy material even half that distance. But I would say, you know, about about three foot above the water, you could still lift material reasonably, but your suction is going to be substantially subdued. You can see here we're doing some further testing on the pump actual gallons per minute. Um, we actually use two different methods. We use a a meter that determines the exact gallons per minute, and we also use a, a ultrasonic meter as well to determine the flow through the water, through the power jet, and so on. This is a close-up shot of the actual pinwheel meter that we use. There's a little teeny pinwheel mounted directly under that, that uh, red knob on the three-inch pipe. And uh, this shot here just gives you a little better view of what uh, roughly 400 gallons a minute looks like. You can tell it's a lot of flow and it's a lot of force coming down there. Uh, now there are a lot of inefficiencies in that plumbing, but we're still doing quite a bit of GPM. I tried a tri-jet and I also tried a quad-jet. And they all did a good job performance-wise, but surprisingly enough, the single jet lock gave us the, gave us the greatest uh, vacuum and the greatest lift above the water. Um, we've done about four or five different things we've been testing. Um, number one, I've been testing the pump with a, with a water pressure gauge, and we're able to determine the pressure or the working pressure that the, the pump is under. Um, number two, we do a midline vacuum test. So we actually put a, a vacuum hose right near the power jet and with an open, everything being open right through. And uh, then I also have a full deadhead vacuum where we just put a cap like this against on the end of the hose and that gives us a deadhead. We also ran another test with, with it. This gives you the same percentage of opening with probably about a 30% opening of water flow. So that's three different vacuum tests we did. And surprisingly, that again, the, the single jet log did the best job. We also are checking things like the uh, engine temperature, checking the exhaust temperature, the block temperature, because when you're doing a proper series of testing, you have to test everything. You don't want the engine to get too hot. Also, um, we've got some pretty good vacuum test equipment. So I was able to really monitor, we're able to actually record each test, and it gives us our highs and lows and average. So it's really handy to have uh, the nice, uh, the, the proper equipment. And we've also done some testing here as well. You can see we have a, a piece of hose that's sitting at about 13 feet in the air. And surprisingly, we were actually able to shoot water right over the top with, with the proper power jet. All right, also when we're testing, we always run an RPM gauge on, on the, uh, the motor. Um, this allows us to make sure the engine come up to full speed and that we'll also have some governor left over for our altitude. A lot of people when they build pumps, they'll just take it, load the engine up as heavy as they can and get the max performance out of it. The problem is if you get into any kind of an altitude, it kills the motor, overheats it, and you're going to shorten the life of your engine. So we're very conscious of building a, uh, a pump to match the uh, engine horsepower because if you put too big of a pump on an engine you can overheat it you're not going to come up to the proper engine rpm so when we're doing that that form of testing what i'll do is we'll take the engine make sure we get up to at least 3600 rpms and then when, once everything's working under load we have to be able to grab the governor and pull several hundred rpms additionally out of the engine to make sure that we have some extra room for higher altitude operations